Welcome back to AWS On Air. I'm A.M. Grabelny, and we're joining you here live at reInvent 2022. I'm joined by my co-host, Chad. Chad, tell the people about you. Hey, everybody. My name's Chad Lacey. I'm the global sales strategist for AWS, and happy to introduce you to my new friend, Knox, from Sysdig. Knox, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, hey, I'm Knox Anderson. I'm the VP of product at Sysdig. I've been at Sysdig almost seven years now. So wow. a decent amount of time in the <laughs> container Kubernetes space, almost yeah. as long as Cube itself. So, wow, that's awesome. Uh, excited to be here. Yeah, well, Knox, we're really excited to talk to you because at, we were just talking off air just a second ago. As I talk to customers and they're, they're, they're getting more enveloped in, in cloud environments, right? They're starting to modernize their apps. They're starting to, to, um, to adopt containers and serverless. One of the first questions that come to mind is how do I secure this? And you guys have a fantastic solution, so can you help people kind of walk through the mental model of that? Yeah, the first thing everyone's really trying to answer is what's out there. Yeah. So <laughs> what clusters do I have running? What's in those clusters? What applications are the, there? What teams are responsible to? So really on that discovery piece, that's one of the things we first help with. And then the second question is, okay, how do I prioritize which vulnerabilities are the most yeah. important to fix? Um, so Everyone, they're all yeah. prioritized, yeah. Right? <laughs> right? All the time, everything's, <laughs> everything's critical, yeah. everything's important, you have a thousand dev hours to fix everything. That's right. Um, and so there's some interesting ways where we'll tell you, like this package is actually loaded and used by your application, and it's got a critical vuln, so maybe that one's the first one you should look at. <laughs> there you go. Um, so a lot of help on those areas. And helping them walk through some of the dependencies that are underneath there too, right? Yeah, the dependencies and then also um, like which ECS task <laughs> is this related to, which gotcha. Kubernetes namespace. Not all namespaces are created equal. Um, right. So some of that context to help prioritize is also uh, a big area. I, I mean, I look at Cystic, I, I've followed Cystic for a long time, uh, love your products. I think for me, like really what encapsulates it is that there, there's always been this, even though the, the divides are, are kind of blending. There's been this divide between developer, between operations, between security, right? Uh, I've got software engineering background, so I come at it from that perspective. I do have some security background too, but it's not the easiest thing in the world for a developer to adopt. When I see things like Fargate, and you all working with Fargate, I look at that in the same way, right? I, I see Sysdig making security much simpler for a developer. Right, and I see Fargate making operations much simpler for developers. <laughs> is that the approach that you all take when you're building your products? Yeah, and a lot of that comes from our founder, Loris. So uh, his previous project was Wireshark, and I think. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, come Look on. at any come tool on. that's used by developers, security people, ops yes. people. Like Wireshark's a great example. And so um, when we started Sysdig, it was more okay. If I don't have a span port to plug into, how am I going to get visibility? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And in modern days, that's eBPF. So that's it's a source of data for monitoring security, and you can really bring teams together through that shared instrumentation. Um, and so, a lot of the workflows you might have seen with like a PCAP file in the past, you can do with assisted capture for troubleshooting, forensics, and, and kind of have different teams working with the same data. So, I, I need to meet your founder one day because. Wireshark has saved my career so many times. As a, as a former enterprise architect, I was always a referee between teams of, you know, it's security, it's network, it's the database, and I would come in with Wireshark and go, guys, I'm ending this argument, I know where the problem is. Yeah, he used to always say packets never lie. <laughs> That's right. Now, the That's new right. version of syscalls never lie. <laughs> I love it. A little it. bit harder to understand the packets, but has all the data you need. Yeah, no, I love it. So can, can you tell us a little more, about, like how is Sysdig helping teams evolve into a cloud native security? Yeah, um, so one of the other core projects from Sysdig is a uh, project called Falco. Um, Falco is yeah. uh, part of the CNCF now, so the same yeah. governance body behind Kubernetes, Prometheus. Um, and Falco, um, since it sounds like some of you will have a network background, it's, it's similar to like what you might have done with Snort in the past, but okay. uses that syscall data. Um, but it can also ingest things like um, cloud trail logs, um, and, and so you can do detection based on anything that's happening in your AWS account as well. Yeah. Um, so what we're working a lot with customers now is how do I centralize detection and response for my cloud environment? <laughs> um, and so Falco gives you an easy open source way to do that for EC2 instances, for anything in CloudTrail, uh, anything in your Kubernetes space. Um, and so that, that path of, hey, I know how to do detection and response on my endpoint, how right. do I now do it in the cloud, is a journey we see a lot of people on. Awesome. I think, uh, you know, from my experience at least, 
a lot of people, when they, when they look at security and they don't have a background in it, they, they find it unapproachable. They don't know where to, to key in. You know, I think for me, the easiest way to sum it up is all of that security data is already there, right? It's, it's happening in your applications, it's happening in, in the logs, it's happening in CloudTrail, like you mentioned. It's all there, right? But getting priority, like you mentioned earlier, getting like what's actually critical, what is happening, and how to approach what we need to solve, uh, that could be the real insurmountable point, right? Sifting through that, that's where Cystic comes in, right? <laughs> um, so when, when you're working with customers that are you know, getting started, making those common mistakes, not being able to prioritize the right things. What are you seeing the most? Um, I think, well, the, the thing you see just a incredible amount in container environments is crypto mining. Oh, okay. really? Interesting. Wow. And there's, just because someone pulled down a different container, um, someone gets permissions to spin up pods in your account. Um, and so okay. if you're looking you at just, like, You just pulled something from Docker Hub, didn't know what was in it, and there yeah, was Yeah, or you mining. just get uh, the ability to create pods, and yeah. uh, something's in there, and then just, you have the ability Spending to create pods up. in the cluster, the cluster keeps growing. Um, so of the attacks in the wild, I'd say that's the number one behavior-based thing that okay. we see. Um, and we actually just did some interesting research where for every $1 of Bitcoin someone mines, it costs you $43 in infrastructure. Wow. Um, so definitely a pretty expensive <laughs> yeah. thing that can happen in your account. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, uh, that, that to me sounds like uh, both a proactive and reactive way to catch that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, how do you weigh being proactive versus being reactive in the security environment? I think you need to do both. Um, right. So something people are starting to say more is like shift left, shield right. Yes. Oh, wow. um, and so on the shift left side, uh, the nice thing about Kubernetes containers is it's all declarative. So it gives you a really easy way to scan a Terraform, scan a Helm chart, and then try to block some of those uh, hygiene and configuration oriented things before it goes into production. Yeah. Um, so that's always the easiest way to start is shift left your configuration management, shift left your vulnerability management, and then watch for behavior on the right side. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I would start off with is the shift left areas, uh, but you always have to watch the right as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because uh, oftentimes you don't know that an attack vector will be present, right? It, it will be discovered later, and that's why you're constantly monitoring your, your, uh, your environment. For yeah. Sure. So we just got a couple of minutes left. I want to dig in, like, what's the best way for somebody to get started with Cystic? How can, is there, is there an easy on-ramp for them? Yeah, two really easy on-ramps. The first, I would say, is Falco. Um, okay. It's a completely open source project. You can install the daemon set, run it super easily. Um, and then, unlike most security vendors, we're completely open with our product. So okay. you can start a free trial, go to our website, sign up, get immediate access. Uh, no one's going to be kind of getting in your way there. So. Uh, Cystic.com slash trial is a easy place to get started. Um, and you can just connect a cloud account, run a daemon set, um, and be up and running in a couple of minutes. And if they're here in reInvent, you guys have got a massive presence out on the expo booth. Yeah, <laughs> if I'm there any longer, I'll end up losing my voice, but definitely come by the booth as well. That's awesome. <laughs> um, any, any parting words for uh, devs getting started with security too? What, what, what areas should they be focused on? Is it, is it packages? Should I you know, really start investigating what I, dependencies I'm pulling in my container? Um, so I'd probably focus most on the organization. Okay. Um, oh, so I love the philosophical than, approach first. <laughs> yeah, That's you great. gotta go there first. Uh, so where we see companies be successful is when like the platform team, the DevOps team, the security team is working together. Yeah. Um, containers give you an opportunity to be more secure. It's not like a new scary thing that right. the security team needs to worry about. Um, so definitely build a center of excellence or a cloud team or whatever you call it at your org to make sure you have these three groups working together because it's no longer just the security team's responsibility. You're not siloed any longer. Yeah. yeah, and so bringing those groups together is definitely the first thing I would do. Awesome. Well, we've got to wrap things up here, Knox, but this has been amazing. Thank you for joining us. And Chad, thanks for hosting with me. Stick around and we will be right back with more content. Great. Right.